Hey everyone, today's species spotlight is hailed as being mysterious, beautiful, and pretty hard to keep in captivity, and all those are fairly correct, and today we're talking about the Cayman Lizard. Now, the Cayman Lizard actually has two different species that both come from South America, mainly in the Amazon Basin area, in countries like Paraguay, Ecuador, Colombia, and Brazil. Now, they both belong to the genus Dracania, which basically translates to dragon. The Draco, the Dracne, that is that in Latin, is dragon, because clearly it's a very dragon, kind of like ephemeral, really cool looking animal. And they get their name Cayman Lizard because of a bunch of their very similarities to another species of reptile that they share their habitat with, and that is the Cayman, usually the Yukari Cayman, that is often found in the same areas. There are actually two different species. One, the one that we see most often, that is the northern Cayman lizard, being a little bit more of that red to orange colored head, and then the green, usually, but it can vary body. The second is the Paraguayan, which is more unicolor. It's typically more of an olive green to kind of like a grayish brown color, although I think they still look pretty cool. Now, they kind of look like what would be a semi-aquatic and arboreal tegu, and that would be pretty accurate because they both come from the same family, although clearly different species and genus. Now, these guys are a very large lizard, about four feet long. And as I talked about previously, they do share a lot of similarities to the caiman. When you look at their tails, they are very long and flattened, which allows them to use it as a paddle to propel themselves through the water. In addition to that, when you look at their scalation, it looks very similar to that of the caiman or of other crocodilians. They're not necessarily osteoderms like the crocodilians have, which are actual pieces of bone that sit under the scale, but they are raised up and considerably harder, so that it looks very similar. The last of the adaptations, in addition to obviously being aquatic and looking like a crocodile tegu love baby, is to do with its eye. All crocodilians have a third eye that allow them to keep it open to be able to see underwater, and caiman lizards also have that. Super, super cool. Now, not a whole lot is known about their populations in the wild as far as numbers go. Most often they're listed as of least concern because there haven't been any real good studies to actually see what their populations truly are. They are observed with some regularity, and when they are observed, typically they're hanging out in branches or fallen trees that overhang or are floating in the water, and sometimes actually moving through the water, oftentimes through that floating vegetation. Now, in addition to their really cool crocodilian-y, caiman-looking adaptations, the biggest and most prominent feature that when you look at this really cool lizard is its head. It is a huge, massive, broad, blunt-shaped head that has incredibly powerful jaws. And they use that for very specific prey items. In the wild, they are typically eating different crustaceans, small mollusks, even some fish and amphibians, but more specifically, snails. They really do specialize in snails, and they have a very uni unique way of getting them. They're obviously gonna grab them like any lizard will, but they'll actually roll them back to the back of their mouths and then crunch down with those very powerful jaws and actually spit up the pieces of the shell. According to one report, which was fairly unverified, but it was interesting to note, so I'm including it, is that supposedly very large ones are noted to have actually doing the same thing to small Amazon river turtles in the very similar way to that they do with the snails. Now, because of this prey specialization, this is what is one of the biggest, if not the biggest contributing factors to why they're difficult to keep in captivity. Now, obviously being a four foot, very large lizard that is semi-arboreal, that is semi-aquatic and likes to dig, means that you need incredibly large enclosures to house them properly. You need to have multiple gallons, probably in the hundreds of gallons of water for them to be able to not only move around in, but to actually spend time in, to maybe even throw in to give some really cool stimulation, actual uh, different prey items in the water. So you need lots of room for that. And of course, obviously dealing with any aquatic reptilian species, incredibly large amounts of filtration being diurnal, you need full spectrum lighting with a fairly high hot spot as well with multiple basking points. So it needs to be pretty high because again, almost every single caiman lizard that you see both in the wild 
and in say a zoological facility, they're almost always overhanging, hanging out on branches over the water. So you need lots of big basking spots and branches to overhang the water for them to choose where to thermoregulate properly, as well as plenty of land, not only to bask and thermoregulate, to dry out, to digest their food, that they also like to burrow, just like their cousins, the tegus. So you need a good area and maybe even a couple little humid hives for them to utilize as well. So that already is a big, big factor when it comes to limiting who can actually keep these guys properly. And then we get to the food. So almost every single Cayman lizard that we have is wild caught. And in addition to all of the issues that come with the wild caught animals, Cayman lizards specifically oftentimes will not accept foods other than usually live freshwater snails. Sometimes they'll accept cans because if you go to some specialty brick and mortar reptile stores and probably you can order them online, they sell canned snails. And that is very difficult to get consistently and in large amounts for a very large or, God forbid, a pair of adult caiman lizards. They're very limiting and you can't really go out and collect them wildly. You could try to breed them on your own, but it's a whole other mess to do that. But you don't want to collect them just to like go out to your guard because of parasites and pathogens and all of the same reason why we typically don't catch wild rodents to feed our ball pythons and boas, right? Now, there are more and more animals that are starting to come from farms, which typically means that once they hatch, they're usually brought over relatively quickly, almost a little unnervingly quickly and young, so that way they don't really get a chance to start eating all of these South American snails to get a taste for them and to stick with that. And then they have an easier time acclimating to our other prepared foods. In captivity, they, and even some of the wild caught ones, will sometimes eventually switch over to say, shrimp, prepared diets like specialty canned foods for reptiles or even some cat foods, nee, um, mussels, and again, live and canned snails. All of this means that in general, it is a very, very particular and specialized lizard. If you actually have means to give what would be probably a minimum of six feet by six feet by probably four feet and that is even then probably a little bit limiting you might want eight to ten feet because of the large amount of water and land that you need plus being able to have a consistent way to feed them properly this would be a very cool reptile to keep now the reptile that you see the caiman lizard specifically because that's what we're talking about that you see predominantly in most of the video of this one comes from colorado gators it's actually one of the few ones that survived the reptile bond fire so we're very good that he's doing very well and he actually mostly eats uh frozen shrimp and uh crabs so really really happy that he made it through but again this is definitely one of the niche species of reptiles that is definitely one that you really shouldn't get just because it's on a whim or you thought it looks really cool definitely a whole lot of research obviously with them more of watching than just this video hopefully you guys enjoyed today's species spotlight hopefully you enjoyed a really really cool species of uh, lizard again because i was at colorado gators when i was filming this so where this guy's is from if you guys do live in colorado or you feel like getting out this summer or really at any time come check out colorado gators um, they're working on rebuilding their uh, reptile barn bigger better newer than before and it's gonna be really cool but hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video again please like and subscribe hit the nail notification all of that youtube mumbo jumbo um, please hit the playlist of species spotlight bunch of really cool species that are listed in there. There's over 60 of them at this point. Again, thank you all so much. Hope everyone's having a great day and we will check you next time.